everybody. Back on the show. Lovely to have. Hey, hey, hey. Lovely to have Daniel Radcliffe on the program, uh, not just because of what he's been able to accomplish in his career as a young man, and he's turning into a decent young man, but it's the roles he's picked, playing Ginsburg, being a part of those, the early stories of the Beat Generation, the Kerouac and those cats, proper counterculture. Like, at a time when counterculture mattered, you were protesting civil rights. Like, well, you are on side with civil rights. <laughs> protesting the other side. You were against the Vietnam War. There were things going on in counterculture that was such a big deal. Did you know that he was also a poet. Daniel Radcliffe was also a poet, still a poet, likes to write himself some poetry. And I want to I sort of explore the way we get into that conversation. It's the panel tonight. <laughs> How you use your words can be very valuable. All right, so our ideas about counterculture, as you know, are often more about, I guess, ideas of trendiness, right? Counterculture is the counter to it, right? right. But our mass culture is so fragmented now, what, where does counterculture even exist now? Counterculture is definitely at, at uh, um, uh, it, it's in danger yeah. because it's been absorbed into the mainstream. I would say counterculture now is like a zombie walk. That would be like counterculture for well, me. I remember going to see a taping of Kids in the Hall uh, when I was a teenager and you were as well. And it was so counterculture. And yeah. Kids in the Hall, were, you guys were doing things that nobody had ever done before. Did you feel like it was counterculture to you? Yes, it did. It felt like we were definitely doing something that we shouldn't be doing. And we were, it definitely felt like we were doing a revolution in comedy, yes. And I keep looking for that, and I, I'm not seeing it in sketch comedy, I'm gonna stick to. You're not, you're not seeing it as much? Not yet. I think counterculture now is like, because everything, like you said, is, has been absorbed into the mainstream now, it's like not getting a tattoo is counterculture. Yeah. Or like making, like using cash to pay for your purchases over $40, like using actual <laughs> cash. <laughs> oh, man, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Or actually using your phone to call someone. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I know I'm talking crazy right now. <laughs> I know. Maybe that's I the know. next uh, kind of revolution if you are actually connecting on a human level with somebody, you know, like right. actually being able to reach out to somebody. Yeah. And it should be an app for well, that. I think You're not listening to I, me. Uh, right, not listening. Or not shaving your genitals. Right. That's kind of countercultural. Yeah, right? right now, Loving I'm hair. a rebel down here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Counterculture, ultimately, when it's really effective, of, um, should be able to hold a mirror up to what's happening in the culture of the time. So let's say there were oh. counterculture revolutionaries today and they held the mirror up to our time. Yeah. Yeah. What would they be reflecting back? Would you call Edward Snowden a, a countercultural revolutionary yeah. I hero? Because I think of him yeah. as a hero. Absolutely, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the fact that he's alerted the world that everybody's listening to everything we say is an incredible public yeah. service. And, and as a I, result, we found out that Obama was listening in on Angela Merkel's cell phone calls. You guys how boring yeah. that would be? Yeah. We need more bread. More bread. You forgot to bring some milk. Stop talking. Just stop talking. What about online? You think like anonymous, like the hacker culture, is that really where the counterculture exists today? Not really, because that's very specific, and it requires a specific uh, set of skills, which I don't think counts as, as sort of like a movement, because yeah. for you to have that movement, you actually have to... Get out there. To get yeah. out there. Well, like, Jack Kerouac today would be on a flip phone. Yeah. I don't think he'd have an iPhone 5. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think he would know how to do code. No, he wouldn't. I mean, he doesn't... You know what I mean? He doesn't know HTML. Yeah, yeah, Stick right. around. We're going to find out who's got the moxie to go on the road. That's next. All right, you're back here on the program. I'm, may I recommend you come down and join us? Uh, George Tickets at cbc.ca is the email address to come see the show at taping. It is totally free, uh, not just because of the fun conversation here, but you get to listen to good music. Uh, Culture Club was playing in the, uh, in the commercial break while we were here. Think about Boy George. What a gigantic rebel it was to see. As, a, as I was probably 12 or 13 when Boy George got on TV, and to see this androgynous character... Um, androgynous? Well... I mean... Yeah. Yes. Flaming Queen. Yes. <laughs> we can say that. But I didn't know what a Flaming yeah. Queen was at the time. And he wasn't even, out, he wasn't no even openly no, gay. He, he wasn't was. at the time. He was just a guy in a dress. But do you remember, how, like, what... I mean, counterculture in music, for me, it was seeing yes. Sinead O'Connor ripping up a picture of the Pope. Yes. I remember thinking, that's a feminist icon. What her message was, that was counterculture. But who's doing that now? Well, I thought that the Bowie releasing his album without any press was pretty revolutionary. Yeah. In his 60s. Yeah, like yeah, an old guy showing you how it's done. I thought that was pretty amazing. The amount of people yeah. who don't know who Billie Jean King is, Billie yeah. Jean King was a counterculture icon and yeah. fighting for Title IX. Title IX, everybody thinks in the United States was just about equal funding for women in sports, but it wasn't. It was for all. 
all, all classes, yeah. right? So those are counterculture, right, yeah. concepts. I think also the, one of the lasting impacts right now is like we 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 find ourselves uh, poetry doesn't have to rhyme anymore. Mm -hmm. Like that's something from. From the from yeah. the big generation, yeah, Ginsburg like fought yeah. his dad. His exactly. dad, played so, by David Cross, uh, didn't want to, to rhyme all the so time. So yeah, a poem can be like, "The moon, beautiful poem." That's it. That's <laughs> Does well, that count? Does that count? Yeah, I, I, I love that poem, but I could never remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have the panel, everybody. Arthur <laughs> Simeon is doing comedy class at the Toronto Center for the Arts, which is on the 17th of November. You can see him. He's also got a couple of gigs later in the month in Calgary, but he can't remember where, so you'll have to Probably find him at the airport. The legendary Scott Thompson, who performs with Kids in the Hall December 4th to the 7th at the Isabel Bader Theater in the T. Dizzle. Jennifer Goodyear is pretty sure she's going to be on Murdoch Mysteries at some point. Good things, you glorious nation. Good things.